Mandy McFly here with Badger Wheel. We just got our one wheel GTs and today we're gonna open them up to see if they really are waterproof. Let's get these vents off so that we can use the leak checker tool. Well, it looks like they have already implemented their first countermeasure. The little locating post in the center has been cleverly blocked. Okay, we're about to defeat their countermeasure. There's actually a slight air passage through the battery cable. Air doesn't go through it very quickly, but it can go through very, very slowly, making you think there's a leak when there isn't one. So let's just seal off this side for now. and see if we are holding pressure. This is not bad. It's hard to tell if this leak is just equalizing with the controller side or if it's actually a real leak, but it's leaking somewhere. So next step is gonna to be to figure out where. Let's do a sniffer check on the front. We're gonna use our special oversized sniffer for this. Given the larger volume of this controller, the regular sniffer might not be quite big enough. You're gonna have to send everybody a pink one. We are not sending everyone a pink one. We've taped up the battery port over here. So that's the only other place that uh, I could get in. Well, that didn't take long. So let's see where it's leaking. I had no idea this is what went into Badger Wheel R&D. <laughs> <laughs> not many people have this. You can hear the tiniest burst of air. Yeah, this is pretty secure, so I think we can do the Windex test. Hmm. Don't see any bubbles there. Let's check inside the connectors. Oh! Well, oh, there we go. Right there between the nut and uh, the connector. In order to fix this, we just have to apply silicone around the outside and put the nut back on and we're done. It is slowly filling. So first culprit, let's check the uh, charge port. Okay, that is not leaking. What about the connector and that whole side of things? There is nothing leaking there. Yeah, looks good. It's not good. So that's the one wheel GT badgered. How hard was it? It's pretty easy. It's way easier than the XR. Tiny bit of silicone, you're done. Future Motion claims that their products are water resistant, but not waterproof. Would you say that's fair? Yes and no. When these are assembled perfectly, they're really waterproof. So when they say water resistant, they're kind of selling themselves short. Of course, uh, you can't really be sure which ones are actually waterproof and the ones that aren't are merely resistant. These are waterproof rated connectors, which means um, this is an industry standard. They're approved, tested, blah, 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 blah. If you install it correctly, it will be 100% waterproof every single time. So if it isn't, it wasn't installed correctly. Whoa, shots um, fired. Well, uh, they had some unique challenges here, namely the, um, the heat dissipation. The adhesive thermal compound is a great way to get heat um, out of these MOSFETs and into the metal case. The downside is that once you stick it on, you can't really slide the board in order to get it butted up against here and tight. Let's say on a scale of one to five, one being if you sneeze near it, it might brick, and five being you could throw it in the river and fish it out and ride it home. What would you rate the GT? You know, it's probably a three. I think the majority of these are gonna be properly sealed all the way around the top here where it matters. This is really a bad place to have a leak because this is right where water is gonna come splashing in if you're riding in the rain or wet conditions and the most sensitive components are right on the other side of that. But this one is, is pretty good. We just took ours out for um, a nice spin, a couple puddles, 
didn't badger them. They're still working. So for now. For now. By comparison, what would you rate the XR? The XR is probably a you know a, a one or a two because oh. a lot of people really do almost nothing and it's water damaged already. The difference is that this the sort of the, the main seal that goes all the way around is really bad. It kind of only works top down, so water can get onto it and run down, kind of like an umbrella. As soon as you tip the board over or something like that, um, any water that's there will just go right in. That's why I think some people ride, you can ride in the rain, you ride through puddles, it works fine. Then other people, it seems to brick right away. It could be because they get it a little bit wet, they turn it over for some reason, or they pick it up to charge it or to transport it, and that's when water runs right in. Many people know, and many more people may not know, that the worst thing you can do after you badger your board is put the wrong length bolts. Are there well, any weak spots like that on this board? So on the XR, as you may recall, these bolt holes were actually above right where the battery cells were. So it was super critical to use the right length, otherwise, you could cause major damage. Future Motion did a great job on this new design. You can see these are where the bolts go through. They connect to the rails. And they have this big clearance on the other side. You could put a two inch bolt through here. You're never gonna puncture the battery. Great, so it's hard to mess up. That is my kind of project. Yes. <laughs> Thanks for watching and uh, check out badgerwheel.com for the GT Badger Kit coming real soon. So we're gonna try to see, okay, that's not showing anything. Um, Babe, it's a dynamic transition. It's oh. all the rage. No, you're fine. We're busy working. Daddy's working. <laughs> yes, get that kombucha in there. Rose kombucha and hibiscus gin. Perfect for any badger job. Is the sniffer like um, grill tongs, babe? Do you have to squeeze it a few times before you use it? Yeah, you definitely, you wanna make sure that it's working. You hear that sound? That's what it should sound like.